Love of the Invisibles, How Ash Found Violet, 28, copyrighted 2015 by Nazeli Zelian. A middle-aged man following Norik was of average height and had pale blonde hair. He had a solemn look indicating that he was obviously disturbed or sad. Another man followed, also with light complexion. He was more relaxed and seemed to be in a better mood. Violet, said the solemn man, fast approaching her, and before Ash could get between them, he hugged her and sobbed. Thank goodness, you're all right. Uncle Harry? Violet somehow knew that it was he. She understood his sorrow. He had lost a brother. Even though Refi was vicious and dangerous, he was still part of his clan, and losing him hurt nevertheless. My little girl, let me look at you. He stepped a little back. You're the image of my mother, a true ref. Hunter, Amber, and Norik entertained the other guests while Uncle Harry talked to Violet with Ash at her side. The uncle and niece conversed as if they had known each other their whole lives. Their connection was a very natural one. Uncle Harry told her about her parents and the ref family legacy. Later, he told Violet that he liked Ash and the way he treated her, and that he had heard about him being a good inventor for city people, helping them with electrical devices for healing since they did not have direct energy in them. I knew Gumper since he was a child. He was a good boy then, but he followed Refi like a puppy, admiring his wits, his gifts and abilities. Refi used that to make him his weapon. And to top the cake, he had promised you to him. Gumper suffered a lot when you were taken. He missed you. And after you were gone, he became melancholic and somewhat violent. That led Refi to recruit him for his plans. They talked some more about what the future would hold. Uncle Harry traveled throughout Europe, helping the Council of People with many ordinances. He explained how, once he had found out Refi's exact plans, he had contacted all the council members and worked on a plan to help Violet with relieving her from some of that enormous energy. It is good energy, he had told them, but it needs to be used in small dosages, otherwise it can kill. And he wiped his eyes once more. The man who came with Uncle Harry was not an ordinary guest. He was one of the members of Council of People who worked with Violet's uncle. When Violet found out, she wanted to get up and show her respects like one would do with any dignitary when she was growing up with city people. But her uncle stopped her and asked her to just speak to him like anyone else. Nice to meet you, Violet Refi, the man said with Slavonic accent. I've been looking forward to this moment. It was strange to be addressed with her real full name instead of Violet Hammond. We have met before, Violet asked. Not directly, but I was one of the members of Council of People in the energy room to have contact with you for the first time. Your energy has more involved since then. I was also there while you were extracting Earth's core energy. I was the closest to you of all the receivers. Excellent energy transmission. You have amazing abilities, he said and explained that the excess energy was filtered through the energy rooms without any harm to the receivers. Each member of the Council of People kept as much energy as they saw fit to their bodies. He explained that only a female ref was able to withstand the whole power of that energy, and even when most of the energy went through her to refi and the bio batteries, the measurement equivalent was too high for any other invisible. I have had a long telepathic meeting with the Council of People and they have decided to put you for election to become a member and serve your people. Violet looked confused to this unexpected development and glanced back and forth from Ash to Norik. Ash shrugged his shoulders. It is your decision, my sweet. Any way you want, he sent her a private message. You don't have to live away from your family, Norik told his sister. But I will support you with your decision, one way or the other. He blew her her distant kiss with a smile. Uncle Harry? Violet asked her uncle's advice. Violet, being part of the Council of People is a long tradition with refs. In fact, 
Red family have created the council and worked on its laws. We all have contributed to the invisible way of life and its culture. Your brother does a lot of work for it, too, although he is not a member. Valak has flown with me from Poland with hopes that you will accept because you have extraordinary abilities. Your gifts could be used for the good of the invisible people. You will work on what your father started, reinstating the invisible communication channels for long-distance telepathic communication by reopening the invisible net and we will be free from city people technology. Council members will have a direct communication portal through you without attending the energy rooms. And this is the beginning. There is so much to do. Violet was silent for a couple of minutes while Valak and Uncle Harry talked enthusiastically what other possibilities would arise if Violet joined the council. So, Violet, what do you say? asked Valak, smiling. I'm deeply honored for the council's offer, Violet answered. But the timing is not quite right. She looked down at her belly and back up to Valak. Oh, we understand that. We meant afterwards, Valak said. I'm new to Invisible World, like a little child who has just been born, she said. Yes, I was blessed with the gifts and abilities, but I'm still learning how to put them in use. Oh, we saw what you're capable of, and you learn quite fast, Valak said. I think I need some time to concentrate on my family, but your offer is an exciting one, so I would like to have it open for the future, when I will feel that I am ready. Is it possible? She asked and looked at her husband to see if he approves of her answer. Ar smiled with his husky eyes. Oh, definitely, definitely, Valak said excited. Take your time, but would you like to do some small jobs from time to time, like your brother, to test it out? Something like... Being on call, Valak asked with his charming Polish accent. I would like that, Valak said. Well then, Valak said, rubbing his hands together, consider to be hired for part-time or on call, whatever you want to call it. We will contact you, and if you see fit to do the job, you will. If not, there would be no hard feelings. Considering the fact that you are new to the business, he smiled his big, charming politician smile. Most of the time we will need you to connect the council members together without us getting to energy room. Sometimes we need quick meetings for emergencies, but it slows down when everyone needs to get to the nearest energy room of their area. We all live far away from each other, as you know. Up there in a the mountain, you connected all of us together. Not only that, you can transfer energy, and if anyone needs long-distance healing, you can transfer special energy through a council member to the one who needs it. And now we have the Earth's core energy. Can you imagine what you can do to help people in need with it? Violet was excited that she could help people, but felt overwhelmed. Too much was happening, too fast. I'll make sure that they give you time, her uncle said, lightly touching her hand, understanding her concern. She nodded. They left shortly, informing them that they would stay in a hotel in the nearest city. Valak was going to fly to Poland in the morning, but Uncle Harry promised to visit in the morning and fly to France with them to have more time with his niece and nephew.